In this video, I'm going to be offering some advice, comments, suggestions, thoughts, computer parts shopping in a scalper's market. Hello, my name is Sean Wilkerson, and this is Hacker Eyes. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, please do so. If you have subscribed, thank you. During this video, if there's anything that I miss or you want more information on or anything, use the comments below during this couple of engagement challenges borrowing from level one. So let's get into this. I'm completely and entirely aware. Yes, this is my disclaimer. I'm aware that what I'm about to share or say or suggest or advise is not going to be popular with everyone. But I believe that there's some actually some good basis of thought here. So I'm going to share it. I, I know that there is a drive. There's a determination to buy these items. It's the most exciting point of the industry we have seen in a very long time. I would almost suggest since 1080s times. There's been very little interesting or exciting. And lo and behold, in the middle of a interesting worldwide time, it all hits at once. How do I know that there's a drive to buy? Well, for those of you who are new to the channel, I took it upon myself while looking for a graphics card, try and find a way of doing it legally, not illegally, legally, find a script that would just pull websites and find if it's available or not. And so put up a script, street merchant, you can get it on GitHub, configured it up, found out that Falcondrin, I think his name is, he was also doing it. So we had two people doing it and it's not competing competition because the way the scripts hit he could hit in one second i could hit two seconds later that's two different hits one of those two may hit and then more people get cards it's just it was just helping everybody i'll link to one of my latest streams i'll put it up here i was almost able to purchase a 3090 at msrp a 3090 have you 1500 dollars card off the affiliate links from a week and a half. That's how much money I made. Granted, the money came months later. That's the way affiliates work. I still don't have the card. Did I have opportunities? Yes, but I didn't think a 3090 was worth it. And I've discussed that uh, other places. We'll find out. You can look at my other videos. I'm not even sure where I comment on all that. In the comments, write down the difficulties and, and the extremes you've gone to to try to get these products. How much time, how much effort, how much money, how many hours have you invested in trying to get these cards? So let's get into my suggestions. Basically, I've only got a few. An AMD 5000 series, the Zen 3s, those are amazing CPUs. I own one. I got a 9500 for around $450. Uh, yes, $450. I anti-scalped. And the, from my understanding, the, uh, the Ryzen 5000 series are the culmination of the last chips, the last CPUs that are to be put on an AM4 mother, uh, motherboard, those chipsets. That chipset's been around for, uh, I think, uh, last I checked, close to a decade, around a decade. And so if you're not upgrading just the CPU, on your motherboard if you do not currently own a b550 or an x570 don't don't upgrade leave it alone and i'll get to it in a minute i uh, will explain more in detail intel's rocket lake skip it if you've seen anatech's uh review anatech basically this is a direct quote it is the culmination of two different backported technologies, unquote. I'd rather see a little bit more innovation, uh, an eye to security, and some more relevance. I just feel like Intel just keeps regurgitating the same stuff on over and again, which is forcing people to buy motherboards. Yes, this CPU will fit in some current motherboards, but that's not the point. 
I don't see where it's worth the money. There's not enough of, of a performance improvement. Just skip it. If you have a 9000 series CPU up, don't buy anything. That's what I would say on the Intel side. Just don't. Not right now. AMD 6000 graphics cards. Uh, they show a lot of promise. I mean, a lot of it. But I actually feel that the promise is going to be fulfilled in the 7000 series graphics cards. Let's get to the NVIDIA 3000. The NVIDIA 3000, the whole series is a convoluted mess. It's confusing. It's frustrating. They're putting uh, SKUs out that don't make any sense. We're going to stop mining. No, you're not. It's going to get worse with the, in the NVIDIA uh, 3000 series. There's already rumors of TIs, or actually announcements of TIs being released. There's rumors of supers being released. So we're going to have a, over a dozen different SKUs. In, an, in a market where we can't get silicone to do the few SKUs we started with. So let's let's just kind of pull all this together. I don't know if you understand this or, or not that you don't understand. I don't know if you realize this. That's a better way. That's, that's what I'm actually thinking. By the end of this week, this video should go up around March 10th. March 17th is the six-month mark from when the NVIDIA 3000 series were released last September. September 17th, they were released. We're at six months. And so this is like a state of the union, six month address. Most of us are no closer to get one of those uh, components than we were then. Here's what I suspect. A week and one day from now, eight days, on the 18th, we will be one day closer to the release of the 4000 series and even further away from the, the release of the 3000. I believe that we're coming up to just a few months. We're less than six months away from the 4000 releases. Well, that's a while to wait. <coughs> let's, let's just work with this. Work with me a minute. I would suggest we skip the 3000s altogether. By and large, I would suggest that we skip the 3000s, the NVIDIA 3000s, the AMD 6000s, until Rocket Lake. Skip them. Skip these lines altogether. But, 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 I understand they're the best we've seen. Just hold on a second. It, it, this is going to make sense in just a moment. Let me, let me, let me try to group my advice into two main thoughts. CPUs and GPUs. If you have to purchase another component to upgrade your CPU, in other words, if you have to buy a motherboard, don't. You're wasting your money. And and, and the way the reason my my re thinking is this: Intel hasn't produced anything worth buying, so just stop looking until it's time. At this point in time, until Intel gets innovative and they start uh, becoming relevant. Just jump the Intel train. Get off of it. Let's go to AMD for a while. And uh, hey, I've used Intel for sh 10 straight years. This is my first AMD system. And what's funny is it's sitting over there. It's not even plugged in because I can't get a graphics card for it, a dedicated one like I would like to. But I have a solution for that too. It's not worth you buying an AM4 motherboard when you can't put anything else in it. You would be better off waiting until the AM5 motherboards come out with PCI Express 5, DDR5, and you're at, the, you're at the front line, the beginning of a motherboard that you can use for probably several generations if AMD stays true to what they've done before. If your graphics card is currently meeting your needs, then I'll just wait for the next generation. But, but, but... Don't buy a graphics card just so you can play a game. The game will still be there later. My son plays Cyberpunk 2077, which is a demanding game. And he plays it on a 2060. Not a super, nothing special, just a straight 2060. And based on NVIDIA's 
marketing, that means you could also play it on a 1080 and a 1070. So more than likely, the majority of viewers, the graphics card they're using now is going to serve them fine for the next few months. Now, a common theme in my suggestion is basically just the wait. Let's look at some of the benefits of waiting. Reviewers can take a break from manufacturers just dropping empty press releases. And what I mean by empty press releases, there's no product. And these knee-jerk products, like NVIDIA releases something, so here comes AMD. Or Intel with AMD. We've seen it, we've seen it all across the board. When somebody puts something out and it stirs some excitement. Then the other ones come up and they say, oh, I'm here too. And so it's causing the reviewers to do a lot of excessive work that's exhausting and it's not it's not it's not producing anything that's actually usable. It's I mean to a point it's almost dead content. One of the best benefits are the scalpers are going to be disincentivized as they get stuck with product. In other words, it's, they're not going to have any incentive to sit there and try to scalp and grab all this stuff up and then scalp it to people, a double, triple, whatever the price that they're selling. Because if everybody just stops buying it, then they're stuck with it. They're going to sell it at a cost, so they're going to have to eat their loss. By lowering the demand, we also reduce the lower the level of hostility in the market. There's a lot of hostility in the market. It's been created by all these pseudo fake launch launches and all this hyped up have to have it emotional junk that companies are good at. Uh, I just heard two days ago of a line. I think there was like 20 some people online and these are just numbers. Number 23 got the card. Number 24 got the last card. Number 25 is trying to knock out 24 to take the card because he missed it by one. That's, this is ridiculous. These are pieces of plastic and silicone. It's straight emotional. And probably the best benefit is a percentage of the silicone they're using right now to produce all these crazy SKUs. How about we just take a percentage of that silicone and save it for the when we start doing 4,000 runs for, for NVIDIA products or the Zen 4s or the um, AMD 7000s or whatever. How about we just take a percentage of what we can get now. If the silicone shortage is there, the silicone shortage is there. This this whole release cycle is a loss for everybody. It's a loss for reviewers. It's a loss for consumers. And it's a loss for the manufacturers. It is a straight up, straight across loss. I mean, even, even some manufacturers are scalping their own product to consumers. That's how low we've gotten or how desperate we've gotten in this. Here's some cons of buying now. So if you're, if you're determined to buy it now and you've made it at this point in the video, let me tell you what you're doing. You more than likely you're buying a dead end technology. And partially what, how I'm going to describe that is this. You're going to pay a lot more money then that item is worth. It is going to lose its intrinsic value extremely fast. And if you want to see a flip side of this, let's look at the manufacturers. Manufacturers need to look a few months into the future. And because that's when people are going to start losing interest in the 3000 series and the 6000 series, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to lose interest in this. Why? Because... Zen 4 is going to be released. AM5 motherboards are going to be released. Uh, RTX 4000 CP, uh, GPUs are going to be released. AMD 7000 GPUs are going to be released. And they're going to say, oh, these are so much better. Well, you're right. It is going to be better. We've already seen some of the specs. So what happens with the manufacturers is going to have a lot of stockpiles sitting there, a product that nobody wants. Same thing happens to you. If you buy something right now, especially an emotional buy right now. In a month, when the, uh, let's say RTX TIs come out, the 3000 TIs, you're going to, oh man, I should have waited. Even in your own mind, you might be thinking it's not worth it. 
Don't get caught up in this dizzying onslaught of press releases and product launches and searching and hunting and finding and all the stuff that we're doing. As every day goes by, it makes less sense. This is a day-to-day thing. It's making lesser and lesser and lesser sense to enter this buying frenzy. As the values of your current generation uh, products lessen, even though the costs keep increasing. I've put links below on some of the things we've discussed in this video. Don't buy any of this. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. Wait till the next generation and let's start fresh then. My name is Sean Wilkerson. This has been Hacker Eyes. And if you like this video, even though not all my points were enjoyable, I'm sure, go ahead and click the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video. Put comments below. In the description, you'll find links to our Patreon or other social media. You'll find uh, links to direct donations. I, I thank you for those who have taken advantage of those things and have actually supply or supported our channel supported this effort and i guess that's it we'll see you in the next video